you're a good boy, aren't you? Go on. There you go. That's it. All gone. Good morning. How is everyone? Where is he? Oh, camera's over there, so he can't. We'll see if we can get him on. No. He's, he's got to go to the vet. He's just got this great big swelling on the side of his... Um, on his side that's just come up. So, got to go to the vet. I don't know how we'll go if Susie can get an appointment today. That'll be good. If not, it'll have to be Monday. He's not in discomfort or anything, but it's just, hmm. And you, you stroke it and you touch it and he doesn't flinch. But better to get it looked at, I suppose. G'day, I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. Or a day in the shed with Steve. Uh, I'm going to finish off those hinges we didn't fit yesterday, because whatever, and also uh, we'll fit that serpentine wavy top to that box, that'll be a vacuum press job, and I think that's just about it. I drew up the design to go into the side of the cabinet, so that's what I want, something like that, I want to carve into the side walls of this cabinet thingy uh, here. So we'll put that on one side and then reverse it and put it on that side. In fact, what I might do first off, I might, I might before I do anything else, I might just trace that and then we'll see how it's going to look. Oh, and I bought a new tool, bought a new tool. For the shed. I did. I did. I'll say good day to everyone in a minute. I went and bought myself a coffee machine because I was sick of... I used to love going up to my coffee shop up the road, which is really, really nice. But because you can't sit there, I've been sitting in the car and I thought, this is absolutely stupid. I'm, I'm drinking a really nice cup of coffee, but I'm sitting in my car. I could do that at home, so I... Went and bought, see if I can find a picture of it. I went and bought a Christina Plus, I think it is. Creaster. A Creaster Plus um, Nespresso machine. And the grandkids and I got in the coffees last night. And I think I had too much because I was buzzing and <laughs> popping at midnight. Uh, so there you go. Anyway, let's have a look and see who's in the house. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, Prinella. Good morning, Andy. Good morning, John. Oh, dear, 55. Way to go. Uh, good day, Trevor. Good day, Devon. Oh, that's nice. It's a nice slow rotate. How did I do that? I have no idea. Good morning, Louise. Good day, Doby. Hail your highness, I like that. Daniel, good morning. Hey, more people say hello to you, Prunella, than they do to me. Have you noticed that? It must be, it must be the essence of your aura coming over the internet. G'day, Tom. I hope I have a good day too. G'day, Mike. How are you? Welcome as usual. Stephen, good morning. I'm sorry, Stephen. I didn't say good day to you yesterday because... We, um, I must have got sidetracked, and you snuck in. But g'day anyway, Stephen. Oh, mate, I'm looking forward to I should call in when I'm going through to Texas. I want to go to Texas, especially this weather is 8 degrees, so I've got the long sleeves on, I've got the jeans on. Winter is officially here. Wombat, g'day, mate. Mark D, good night, g'day. Jared, good morning. Terry, g'day, how are you? Uh, oh, that's good, John. We said population's going down, but healings are increasing. I think that's good to hear. Happy Partial Freedom Day, Queensland. Yes, stay off the roads. Oh, mate, is it going to be bedlam? I went, I went yesterday. Um, I had to go and get some other stuff when I bought the coffee machine. And I went to Bunnings. There is no way in God's wide earth that I am standing up in a queue to spend money. So I didn't stay at Bunnings for very long. 
I thought, you got to be kidding me. And then Sue said, can you just pop in the Kmart and pick me up some stuff? Same thing. No, you didn't get it. There's too many people at Kmart. I'm not a, I'm not a patient Q type person. And I really, I don't make apologies for that. It's just the way it is. So we're going to have to make this branch a bit bigger, I'm thinking. There we go, and we'll put some gnarly little bits on there as well, I think. Just because we can. I was talking to the chap in the store where I bought my coffee machine from yesterday. And he reckons it's absolutely, he wasn't looking forward to today. He said it's absolutely berserk. People are spending more money whilst they're locked up than they did for Christmas last year, if you can believe it. Absolutely crazy. Let me just go and see if I can find a rubber of some description. And then while I was out, I thought, oh, I'll go and have a quick look in a, a carpet shop because I promised Susie when the new bed gets installed, we'll have new carpet to go with it. And I was talking to the lass in the carpet shop and said, how, you know, have you found there's been a downturn? She said, no. She said, there's been a huge increase because everybody at home has decided they're going to take the time to do renovations. So I guess in a lot of ways, a lot of businesses have found that they're doing it tough, but a lot of businesses are finding that it's a bit of a boom, which is... We might have a bit out there too. Which is good, I suppose. <whistles> oh, you've got to concentrate while I'm drawing. I used to love it. I used to go to art classes. Not that you'd think of it, think of it if you see my drawings. But it was great. You could just lose yourself on the end of a pencil. Okay. I think that's going to be... Good enough. Oh, one minute. That's got to do that one. Okay. That's what we're looking at. Oh, I, I love coming down and doing this because I've got no idea. Well, when I come down, I've got an idea of what I'm going to do. But when I actually get here, I don't seem to do it. So it's all good. It's all good. <whistles> so that's that's basically where I want it to go. Like that. 
put a crease down there and a crease down there and one there and one there. And one down here. That way I'll be able to line it up on the other side. And what I'll do with the other side is I'll just flip it over. So we get the mirror image. I don't want to knock anything off the bench, but there's every chance I will. <sighs> Again, pencil carbon paper. Not real good, I can't can't see that too well, and I bet you I haven't got a light here. Oh well, it's alright. We'll free hand it if we have to. And I'm going to have to move the carbon paper up. See? Okay, let's have a look at that. Oh, that's coming along all right. What haven't I done there? Okay, here's that one. It's not too bad. We'll just bring that in there and that in there. That will have this there. That can come around. 
there a bit more. Okay. So that's what I want to carve in there, and then I want to carve the same on the other side. So let me catch up what is happening in the world of the chat. G'day, Randy. Good morning, Reginald. Owen, g'day, mate. How are you? Um, yeah, it, it's it's quite strange. And and to tell you the truth, when I had to line up, um, I thought, no, nah, I'm not playing this game, I'll go and buy online. Which I did. And and it suits me because I saved petrol. Yeah, it's it's I it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in the coming months. <clears throat> Oh, I'm with you, Trevor. IGA, RIG, we've got IGA, and straight across the road there's Coles, and you might be talking 20 cents in price difference, or 5 cents. Why would you bother? Oh, <laughs> I'm sure it is, John. You'll be, your business is up dramatically. Da -da -boom, ba -da -ba -dum. I have gone with Australiana, I have. So that's what I'm going to be putting there, Barry. And good morning to you as well. Where are we? Owen, I'll get Owen, then how is everyone? John came in. Oh, okay, I'm up to there. IGA. Uh, Randy, today the big box stores were busier than I've ever seen them. Parking lots. Yeah, it's crazy. Absolutely nuts. Away. Way to stay off the road, I reckon, at the moment, until everyone sort of gets back to them. And all the, I, I'm on a few drone sites, and they're all itching to get out and fly their drones, and I'm thinking, <laughs> why? But anyway, I suppose that's it. But unfortunately, what's going to happen, they're going to have all their groups and um, then they're going to clamp down because you're in more than, you know, bigger groups. I don't know. It's just one of those things. Terry, good morning, uh, uh, Wombat. How are you and Eve? Oh, there you go. Eve was once again glued to TV. There you go. Mm. Fruit cake and a cup of tea after. Again, <coughs> I was going to bring my coffee machine down. I was going to sit and have a coffee with you, Trevor, but I couldn't. I couldn't because I, I, it's, it's nice and shiny and I didn't want to have it on my messy bench, but I might bring it down just so I can have a coffee one of these days. Good morning, Max. That's it, little gum leaves with little gum nuts. I went out and grabbed some gum, little, uh, a branch of a gum tree and had a look-see. Yeah, I, I think so, Barry, and it's, um, I'm just, I'm experimenting with, with ideas at the moment and I, um, I don't know, I'm contemplating getting back into full-time making. But not commissions, just um, spec work. Yeah, you know, Bob's well. I'm going to take him to the vet, though. He's developed a great big lump on his side. I mean, a big one. He's not in pain or discomfort, and he still runs up and down and barks, and he came in and got his feed. But poor bloke, he's, he's getting old, too. In winter, his favourite thing is he comes in, looks at me, and I flick the counterpane back, and he jumps up on the bed, and then I pull the doona right over the top of him, and he snuggles up to me. And this morning he came in, he looked at me, and I flicked the... And he got his front paws up. 
and that was it. He didn't have enough strength to get on. So I've got a blanket next to the bed, so now he comes and lies on that, and I just reach over and pull a blanket over the top of it. And he's happy. Howdy, Jeff. Morning, Murray. Oh, it's good. You got the internet -y thingy thing and the jiggle working. That is good. Are you are you looking at the thingamajig in your shed or you're in the house? Murray. <whistles> Those boxes might be high on the list to do the way they've been. Yeah, they no, they were. There was a deadline, and then um, when the lockdown happened. The guy changed the deadline, but now it's starting to be lifted. I've got a very, very strong suspicion it's going to be next week. He's going to say, oh, can I come and pick him up? So. <laughs> oh. I, the lunacy will begin when I go out west. Don't worry about that, <laughs> Barry. Yeah, look, I mean, it's just so enticing. It's 1.4 metres inside the, the yeah, 1.4 kilometres inside the New South Wales border. And the property borders New South Wales and Queensland, so I don't know. But, no, I was going to, well, there's a the trip out to St George starting tomorrow that I'd love to be on with Terry Gordon getting some gidgy, but... I said I'd be here, and so I'm here. And what's the weather like in London, Barry? It's cold here. Well, I say cold. It's eight degrees, a lot of you people. But Prunella would be around, skipping around to the beach with a bikini on at eight degrees, she tells me. Oh, not, not me. Extra blanket on the bed. Good morning, Apple Hat. It's that time. Oh, it's, it's a good thing to do with the chisel, whack it on the head. Ken, build a wooden go kart or trike engine, and rear end are very easy to find. Tracks. You're building one, or you want me to build one? No. I, I've got to ride on my one. I, I've got my go-kart. Oh, isn't that lovely, Murray? Then get out, kids. Look after your granddad. Make sure that he gets a cup of tea. There you go. Hope that helped. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. <laughs> you reckon that'll work? Yeah. Mal Meninga sent me. Oh, dear. Oh, I tell you, Randy, that reminds me of a story. When I was a lad, um, I used to have trail bikes and mate and I, we used to, it wasn't a good day unless you'd either smashed yourself or smashed the bike up. And we found this abandoned railway line in Newcastle. At Wall's End, if anyone knows where that is, where the coal mines are. And we thought, that'd be awesome, let's go in the tunnel. No lights, nothing. And it was a great, great joke because the person who got out front, what they used to do was put their feet on the ground and create a dust storm so you couldn't see where you're going anyway. And we were in the middle of this tunnel and all of a sudden this light appeared with a very loud hooter and we found it very quickly. It wasn't an abandoned railway line at all. Oh dear, oh dear. I suppose you get fined for that nowadays but we just laughed about it. It was funny. Ah. Oh. Forty-six degrees for yeah. Well, that's cold. That's cold. It's it doesn't matter what it looks like. It's uh, it's the happiness that it evokes, Prunella. <laughs> Actually. 
friend of mine from, um, I don't know, somewhere in, somewhere in Ireland, and he went back. And he'd been living here for a long time, and he went back. He was over there for two weeks, and he said and it rained for 10 days. And when it wasn't raining, he said it was heavy fog. So he was pleased to come back. He got some nice castles in Wales, though. I'd love to go and visit those old car, ca castles. London was wet, but further north, lovely sunshine. There you go. I've still got some cousins. Where do they live? Around Hastings, I think. Mike, I, if I had a son, I'd name him Chisel. So when he got a whack on the head, it'll be nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose it was if we, if we hadn't got off the tracks. Oh, dear. All right. My theory is London is always wet to ruin the days of the politicians. Oh, well, that's, that's deep. That's deep, Prunella. Okay, so I've got that one here, so I'm going to flip it over. And we'll flip the camera over. Oh, uh, dum ba dum. Oh, here we go. That goes there. Where are we? Down here. This one. All right. So where I put those creases, I just have to crease them again, only the opposite way, and it will line up perfectly. And there we have it. So I might just see if I can get a bigger bit of carbon paper. That way I don't have to do it twice. Okay, where did I put the car? There it is. And say, so where did I put the carbon paper? But it's there. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. I don't, oh, then I didn't even change that, did I? That's why we didn't do the hinges yesterday, because I had the wrong router bit in there. So I'm going to have to change it. I think once I've done this, then we'll put that top on the um, serpentine box. And ba -bum, ba -dum -bum. Okay, we'll stick that under there like that. That lines up with that, that lines up with that. So that all should be good. Let me just go and sharpen the pencil <coughs> once more. Even this, you know, I did the reverse marketry and I said it plays with your head. This does too. Because you know the design you just drew on the other side goes one way. And this one goes the opposite. Ba 
Okay, so that one goes in that one. And this one here. Straighten that one out later. Goes there. This one goes here. That one goes there. Goes there. Oh, we've got one fly that's just come into the workshop that hasn't realised it's winter. bring that one around there a bit more I think that, that. that can go okay so there we have it So that'll be carved in on that side, going in that direction. And this one's carved in on this side, going on that direction. So that's the job for the next couple of days. And I agree with you, Barry. I think too many Celtic knots around. <coughs> Let me just this paper back in here. And I'll put that away. Not that I'm getting super clean or anything like that. It's just if I put it away I'll know where it is next time. Oh dear, oh dear. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Ask me if I'm having a dropsy sort of day, I am. There we go. That'll do. All right, this box here, this box here, let's have a look at it. It should be... Looking pretty schmick now, I'm thinking. That's this one here. I'll just put this to one side. Scoop a put a boom, boot a bit boom, 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 boot a boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. I'll just put the date on that. What's the date today? Close enough. First of May, that'll do. May 2020. I just like putting notes so years later when I go back I can have a look and oh that's what I did then oh that was right I'll just move this so you can see what I'm doing I'll get back on the, that one very very soon so take the rubber bands off Whoop. and put them back 
back in the fridge where they will stay fresher longer. We might use a couple of these. Don't know if we'll need this one or... Yeah, that'll do. Okay, these are... Um, these are smaller ones and they're 105s. Use those a lot in smaller boxes. So we'll just have a look. See how it's going. Clean the corners up with a bit of 100. It's not a bad, whoop, not a bad join. But we can just feather that in. So it's nice and, nice and smooth all the way down. And on this side. Nearly there. See how nice and tight that is? A little bit of a that's not too bad. Um, 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 um. There we go. I would like to veneer this too, but I can't do that really until I get my new hot plate, which should be here next week sometime. Because I've got nothing. I mean, I've got other electric hot plates, but they're not as well controlled as the induction ones so it's all right we'll get this done and then we can put the veneer on later which if you remember we did that madrona one with the um uh diamond pattern in it so I'm just taking, feathering this down to there. Nearly there. There we go, nearly. Nearly, nearly. I think I'll get the rest of that with a paper. Adam Hills, I like Adam Hills. He's good. Actually, the lady who does the uh, signing for Adam Hills, um, I've forgotten what her name is now, Linda? If she was going to do the signing for Woodworking Masterclass, but then I got Mike to do it, which was interesting. She's a nice lady. Hello, missus. Yeah, it might be an idea if you, if you can ring the vet and see if they've got a lead. Hmm? Oh, okay. What did he say? Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, that's all right. 
And what did you? That's two o'clock. Did you tell him he just had a big lump? Yeah. yeah. And he'd had fat. Just the receptionist I spoke to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Had vet up there. I think his lips mate had the uh, vet from the Gold Coast. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, not sure. Well, we'll have to find that out. Well, it's good, good if we got mates in, in high places. Yeah. I just said to him, ask Jeff. He if, come in. If uh, he knows Luke. Yeah. Uh, she said, I'll see him on Wednesday. So that's what I got. Oh, there you go. Mm. Oh, well, we should be able to see if we can find his lead by yeah. then. Well, she said, if you want, come up there, bring Bob. Yeah. And. They'll give you a lead. Oh, that's all. And... Yeah, because he doesn't like other dogs. No, he? no, he's, no. He's like us. He's antisocial. What have we got? Oh, do you like that? Mmm. Be... Oh, you didn't see. It. Hang on, I just got to go show what I did. Called show and tell. That's what I'm going to have on the carved into the oh, sides. Cool. Yeah. Eh? That's nice. Yeah. I don't, shh, sh it wasn't, it was a tool for the workshop. Oh, okay. I thought I'd keep oh, it. look at that. Isn't, isn't that, did you do them this morning? Geez, you've been flat out. Look at that, I got, anyone wants to come to the workshop and have a coffee now? Look at the swish things we got. So you can have an espresso, you can have an empty, <laughs> not a cup, that's nice, that's really, yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Good coffee coloured ones. Can you do one with mine on it? Mine, oh, that's, mine, that's mine. mine, mine, mine. Yeah, they're good. And then if you really want to be fancy, you can have sharps. Oh, look at that. <laughs> She's been busy today. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, you can make a nice mobile out of that. Yeah. For the little chillin' when he comes along. Yeah. Sark, sark. But just like his old man. Mm. No, not his old man, his, his old man's brother. No. First time John saw a waterbed. <laughs> Woke us up at three o'clock in the morning because he wanted to see the sharks in the waterbed. So there you go, I like them. We should actually, we've got one of those we're going to um, yeah. put resin in, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. They're good. Oh, she's clever. What have we got? So where is everyone from on the chat? Okay, we've got a where to go. Where are we afford it? Now they didn't they? Oh dear, oh dear. Cause Sangroper, that's a that's a little lizard, isn't it, mate? Ray? A sand groper? It's a lizard, I think. I don't like... What are we up to? I'm just... Oh, no, I've got to get past all that. They're talking peanut butter. We still haven't made that peanut butter no, cheesecake that. that John made, have we? <coughs> oh, now they're onto it. It's a boat, Ray. <laughs> a schooner, it's a boat. Oh, here we go. Ray says hi, Prunella says hi. Mm. <whistles> Would be wonderful to meet you both. Oh, there you go. Oh, I thought it meant us. You don't want to meet us, do you? No, we just, no. no definitely it's... not. <laughs> so Avon's typing now. Ooh. John says, hello. Uh, morning, says Louise. Wombat says, hi, Sue. I agree with even though my grandma was... was or the, 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 the. <whistles> it is. So Trevor says, good day. And Ben, mate, it's cold out here too. So, is it doubly cold on the coast? What are we doing here? I'll fix that in a minute. Get out of there. I was saying this, so I've got to come to the coast because I've got to go to Campbell's. 
to get some some much needed supplies, don't we? We do. Max says, how's your magic needles going? <laughs> They're going. Andy loves them. Thank you. Whales and sharks. Oh, they, um, I don't know. What are they? Whales sharks. Or sh sharks. Sharks. Brunella. Oh, yeah, it could have been an orca. Don't know. No, that's me. Orca or awkward? <laughs> Both. Yeah, no, you're an awkward orca. Yeah. You complained this morning, my feet were cold. Yeah, they were. Yeah, it's just Seriously. not fair. But your legs were nice and warm. Well, there you go. We should share. I was just trying to cool your legs down. <laughs> oh, dear. All the houses we buy seem to get demolished, don't they? Yep. Trevor says the house, oh, who was born? It's still standing. Is the house you were born in still standing? Yes. It is. There you go. Well, last time I was there, it was anyway. Uh, citric acid. Why don't they make them go black, though? Apple hash? Don't know. I know when I've done it with vinegar, um, the steel goes black, which is a bit... Yeah. Jeff says, hi, Sue. Hi, everybody. Been out on a call out at 3 a.m. this morning. Oh, no. I'd say ring me back in five, five hours. <laughs> <clears throat> Would be a great kid story. Well, you can write it, but I'll, I'll take the title. Prunella, <laughs> the awkward orca. Well, it could all be about an orca living in a goldfish pond with goldfish. Mm. He'd feel pretty awkward then, wouldn't you he? You would. We had the right kids' stories once, didn't we? Remember that? Mm. It was Sue and I did a, um, a death and dying course, um, all about end of life and what have you, with that particular stage what I was in. I was involved with a few people that were at the end of life and we thought we'd go and do this course. And um, part of it was you had to write a, a kid's story, which, which was really cool. Oh, there you go. Keeps her, keeps her off the streets, John. He likes your work. Well, that's a good thing. <clears throat> <laughs> you can be lucky sometimes, Apple Hash. <laughs> ah, there you go, Max. <laughs> you, you have... You should hire your bar for goals, I think. <laughs> He's got a goal to meet me and you. Oh, there you go. There you go. Well, it's nice. It's nice you should think that way, though. All right, Apple Hash, you take it easy and rug up nice and warm. Absolutely. You need it. Oh, that's great. Andy just made a new, carved a new chisel handle. Cool. Oh, no, there you go. Bob Angel, okay, all right. You're napping. Oh, you, oh, you're back. Welcome back. Well, there you go. You got one. Prunella? She put them on tape. That's what I did with my books. I put them on um, CDs. Mm. I should do it again because my voice has changed somewhat since then. I, I was young. Uh. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Uh. Oh, so have I. Apple hash. I know what you mean. And you know who put it there? See, you can't complain about me being fat because you're the one that made me fat. Because you're too good to cook. Go on, have another bit of, have another bit of, uh, what is it, trifle? No, no, I'll leave. No, go on, go on, I'll make another one tomorrow. Oh, speaking of which, you've got to make another one today because I'll finish that one off last night. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. We're going to do some more work. Hey, give the mooch. 
What are they, the chillins up to? Same thing as they're always up to. Oh, playing games. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes you just shouldn't ask the question, should you? That's exactly right. All right. Now, that's not brilliant there, but it's not bad. That's pretty good there. Turn it around the other way. That's good there. All right. So what I'm going to do is cut off this bit here. Um, actually, no, I think I'll have a little bit of overhang on both sides. That just gives me a little bit of safety if it moves when I'm... Gluing it up. Put that there. There, and we'll come out there. All right. Okay. I'm just going to go over to the bandsaw. We'll cut that off, so we'll take you over there. Then we'll glue it up. Then we'll whack her in the vacuum press and let us do its thing. other side. Now there's every chance when I start this it's going to bite a bit so I'm just going to have to hang on to it. Okay, that's done, we'll go over to the vacuum bag, and see how that's looking. And I shall put some glue on it. Hickory cups. Okay. We'll see which one fits best. That's pretty good, that side. That's good. That's oh, I tell you what I should do too is cut off some of these wings. There we go. Um, all right, just cut these off. I'll do it on the bandsaw. So you won't see me for a minute, but I'll be back. You'll hear me. Oh, 
Okay. Now I've got veneer on there already on the back. Do it that way. On the back and the front <clears throat> because I want this to be stable and I'm putting another one on the top here. So, and that, uh, what I use there is called bendy ply. Now let's just see how we go. Uh, it's looking pretty good there, it's looking pretty good there. We'll just turn it around and see if it's any better fit. No, that way works better. What I'm going to do too is just cut off these corners. Because, 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 because. Because I don't want really sharp corners cutting into the... Um, plastic bag, even though it's pretty much strong stuff and it won't break or split, I just don't want to give it that chance. So I'm going to just round those over a little bit, use a bit of sandpaper. Why do we call it sandpaper now when they haven't used sand for years? Just one of those things, I suppose. Okay, so that's all I've done. I've just taken the corners off so they're not super sharp. Now we'll layer up some glue on it. And again, from our discussion yesterday, I'm not going to be about shy on putting it on. I'm going to leave it big like that. I'm not going to flatten it out because if there's any gaps that need filling, That big bead will do it. I'm going to put one rubber band around it. If I can get it on there somehow, rather. Really. Ah, crikey. Ah, get in there. This way. Oh, love and dark. Oh, I'll put one on this end. Now that most likely would hold it actually to glue it, but I like the idea of the vacuum press because it really gives it an overall. Good seal. Okay, let's go over to the vacky. And here we go. clamps, which I should have taken over with me in the first place. Here we go. I'll 
Fold that in, fold that in. One more for luck. Clamps are like glue. I don't think you can ever have enough. And we'll turn it on. See how those round corners just prevent extra stress on the cover? And there we go, we'll leave that there for about an hour and she will be good to go. I'll just grab that other round a bit while some over. In this neck of the woods, That one should do, I think. That would be nice. Brilliant stuff. Love it. Ah. Where are we up to? Good morning, David. That's, that's good to know. The work is not interfering with your watching. It was funny this morning. I got up and thought, oh, I wonder how many people are watching because it's Saturday. I suppose it's Friday in other places. And there you go, we still got we still got a good room. That's excellent. Uh yeah, Andy, no, we'll just cut it off with a bandsaw. I'll show you how to do it. You can't cut it off straight through the bandsaw. You've got to make a couple of little uh, supports up for it. Or else what happens is as soon as the bandsaw goes in. The top of the box goes right and the bandsaw goes straight through the lid. Why do I know this? Because I've done it. <clears throat> oh, it's easy. You want something to sharpen, just use them. And then they get blunt, you've got to sharpen them again. Oh, sharpening tools we got. So there's Tridents, yeah, there's Tridents, Shepex, Records, Tridents, Shepex, Records. Oh, there's a few out there. It was soon as the, soon as the patent 
on the Tormek ran out. Boom. Oh, Jet's got another one. Jet's another one. Grit paper. Right, we'll call it grit paper. From now on, henceforth it has been ordained we use grit paper. Glass paper, yeah, they, well, they used to put glass on it, didn't they? I must admit, it's hard to beat a Tormic. Prices, you know, if you go in price, yeah, I'd go the record, I'd say. Um, but if you're not worried about price, go the Tormic. Reason being, you won't stall it. Mm. But... Oh, it depends how hard you push things, I suppose. <coughs> Let me change this over. <laughs> ah! Oh, uh, yeah, honestly, it is. It, uh, it costs a lot more, but I've never had a drama with it. And I sharpen all sorts of weird things on mine. I've actually got an adapter that I can sharpen um, thickness of blades with. I don't. I, I do use it for sharpening jointer blades, but thickness of blades I do on a... Um, a Makita. I've got a Makita flat bed water, sand, uh, water sharpener, which is excellent too. <clears throat> well, we, we could get technical, Brian, couldn't we? It's a braiding. We're abrading the timber. There you go. Well, hello, Yvonne, but Bob's not here. He's gone. He, he'll be back later on. But I'll send him your good wishes. <whistles> yeah, yeah, that's true. They are nice and quiet. In fact, the, the Tormic, I've got, I've got one here and I've got another couple up in another shed. They're that quiet, I can leave them on all day and forget that they're on. Not a good thing. Oh, it's not bad, but yes, there's electricity and I'm tight. Oh, there we go. Where are we up to here? <coughs> Um, yeah, that uh, vacuum pump. Can you hear that vacuum pump? Yeah, it's a rotary, rotary pump. And uh, yeah, it was out of a dental, oh, what do they call those things? Sanitizer. Basically what it is, you put all your dental bits and pieces in this thing and it injects really, really hot steam and then in a fraction of a second or whatever, whoosh, it sucks all the steam out and creates a vacuum so nothing can live. And then your dental tools are sterilised for the next gob you want to stick them into. Um, I don't use <coughs> uh, band clamps so much, but I do use this a lot, which I think is, if I can get it without dropping something, is really, really great for polygons. It's a uh, string clamp by Nobex, and these um, little things conform to any shape or angle. And then you've got this one here that's actually got a cleat in it. So you put them around your object, you pull it tight, 
then you pull that string down into that cleat and it holds it. Let me give you some ideas of some of the shapes you can do. I use it a lot on framing. Really is a great bit of kit. <coughs> mate. Thanks for dropping in. Trust your day went well or is going to go well. <clears throat> yeah, mini monster, little monster. We've got to use it. Oh. <laughs> oh, look, I could do these with a chisel, but I'm not going to. Sneaky Steve, there's a good, there's a good title for your book, Prunella. <laughs> Sneaky Steve. Oh, I'm, I'm not a fan of the CBNs, Trevor. I must admit, and I'm not a fan of the uh, Tormek Diamond Wheels either. I like the old ones. Just the old way. All right, now what are we going to do? I've got to work out how deep this is going to be. So what I have to do, or what you have to do, see if you're going to do routering, use a router to do your hinges. You want to go with a hinge that won't fall off the bench. You know the bad thing about brass hinges? You can't pick them up with magnets. Okay. You want to go half the depth of that barrel. If you're going to go anything, go a little bit deeper rather than a little bit shallower. Because shallower will give you a gap in the back of your box. A little bit deeper, you can fix that up. Okay. So, what do I do? A little bit of scrap. Oh! Now I'll get a flat bit of scrap. There you go, this will be. Plug her in. Oh, I just noticed I don't have a test and tag on this. I, I should do a whole stream just test and tagging the stuff. <laughs> oh dear. Make sure it's off, turn it on. Turn it on. All right, so all I'm gonna do is just go in a little bit. And that oak smells lovely. Go and cut that in half. in there, pop that over the top, and there you go. That's not bad. I could go a little bit shallower maybe, but I'm really not going to lose any sleep over that. I quite like that. So that's the depth that we'll have. I did think what I'll do, I'll do this one we had set up yesterday and it might be too tight and if it is I'll go ahead and fit the 
hinges and if it's too tight, the lid will spring, which is what I was talking about. And then I'll show you how you can fix a myriad of problems you have when you're doing boxes. I'm missing my compressor, but it's been that long since I've had it. I, I don't know what it's going to be like to have one. Okay, this is a non-slip mat. They're good value. Get rid of that, get rid of that. That dog's had a few more, a few more coats on it. It's starting to look quite nice. So I was looking at some fabric yesterday when I was out and I really don't know, I don't know if I'm going to line it with fabric or leather or whatever. We'll line it with something. Okay, here we go. For those who didn't see yesterday, what I did was I've got a piece of um, veneer with masking tape. between let's get it that's it between these two joins let's go all cams where are oh look at that you can still see the vacuum pump screw up bomb body Um, to give me a gap. The reason for that is then that gap, that's the right hand one. Oh, where'd that one go I just had? Oh, oh well, I'll live with it. Um, and what I've done here, I've got an extra bit of perspex on this base as I explained yesterday it gives me far more control instead of trying to balance this base that comes with the router on this edge I've got far more control here so I can just turn it on and Do the other one while I'm in while I'm in the mood I'll do the other one. You see how much more control that gives me? It's so much easier. I'm just controlling it from back here instead of just working with that little bit. So if you've got to do that with, with uh, nothing annoys me much, much. Some things do. Yeah, if you didn't have that big one on, you've then You've just got this little area here to work with. And yeah, it's just not as comfortable as when you've got a larger piece. Okay. Now we'll take that off. There's the other hinge I was looking for. 
into one. Okay. Where I've put those cut marks, pop the chisel in there, just tap it down, and on the other side, and then, and then, and then, and then. with a knife, clean that area out. So I don't like those, they're the Australian ones. They're just, as I said before, I don't like the blade. This is the English one, it's got a much nicer blade to it. It's more refined, the other one's more of a Slimline utility knife, whereas this has got more finesse, you can do more with. That, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Now this also is a great opportunity to use a little hand router. Or if you haven't got a little one, the bigger ones. Which I think I might get the bigger one out because this one's this one is a bit blunt. Yep, no, it's Swinging around, and it shouldn't be, so let me get this one here. Not using the metal one on that. Okay, that's good there. I really should have, have a light with me here.
Okay, that's good, that's good. Now, what was that one? That one's the left. No, that one's that one. This is the right. I don't know any real shortcuts for putting hinges in. And if you do rush it, you can just ruin your job. La da pum, la da pum. Okay. So that one goes there. And that one goes there. Is it the right way? Okay, so now we've got this bit of um, veneer around here. That's going to give us the space. I'm starting to think it's not going to be wide enough, but that will be good because then I can show you what you can do. Nearly lost the router. Where is, is, is? Oh, I'm looking for the screwdriver, Henry. Electric, oh, well. Well, else well, I found my light, so that's a good that's a good thing. Ah, and there's my screwdriver. Hey, things are looking up, I tell you. Now, what I use is 
I don't know what they're called, but I'm, I'm sure they have a name. These little screwdriver, I mean these drills here, it's got a retractable spring-loaded top on it. And the great thing with these is you line it up here and it's countersunk, right? It's beveled there. So it sits nice and into that countersunk and centers the drill bit. And then when you push, so the drill bit comes through, gets it centered. Now don't do all of them like that. Maybe just the first one to get it in. And I don't screw all the holes in at the same time either. Get it centered. I've got a little bit of a gap either side here. So I halve that gap. And then when the box is lined, you won't see it. Pop that in. Just go in a little bit. Not far. And from there on, I'll use a hand drill. To go in. Should we get the right side up? Little screwdriver. And I don't know. I don't know. I've got um, Phillips head screws. I don't normally like. I think they're going to be too big, but they're going to be too big. That's all right. So I'll use these small screws I've got here, little, little brass ones. A little bit of soap. When you're using brass screws, soap is the go. It's better than wax. Don't ask me why or how, but it is. Pop that in there. Send that one home. Make sure she's lined up nicely. Um, then you can do what I did before if you want. You can just put a very, very shallow drill in there and that will actually allow you to find the center with this drill again don't be too reckless with it because you can go through the tops if you're not careful a little bit of soap When you feel it's starting to bind, go in and then come out a couple of turns, go back in again. What I should actually do is have something under there to give it support. Might be better. So when I press down, I'm not preloading the screws that's getting very close to spinning the head off I think all right do the same for this side okay that's marked so that goes in here Move this support that we had under it over to the other side. Like that. All 
I'm thinking, I'm, I'm actually hoping that this is going to be too tight. And the reason I don't put all the screws in when I'm fitting a box is because if I make a mistake and I have to reposition the hinge, I've only got two holes to worry about. I don't have to worry about drilling four new holes. All right, now we'll see. So I've got two screws in there on the diagonal, two here on the diagonal. Get rid of that, and we'll see. Oh, okay. Let's have a look. See that? See that sprung? And the reason for that is the gap here isn't big enough. If I put another layer of veneer in there, we won't get that. So I'm pleased that happened. And what a lot of people do, they'll put a catch there and the catch will hold it. And as soon as you pop the catch off, the box opens. So it needs another piece of veneer in there. But I will show you what you can do. Now sometimes, if you've done that, or actually we can, uh, we'll leave these ones in and we'll work on the box lid. All right, so now we, we put the screws either side on a diagonal. So if I take these out, we've still got these two screws on a diagonal we can use. This one's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna come out a little bit, but these screw holes now that we've got in there, they won't line up. And when you put a screw in there, it's gonna go in at an angle. Three things can happen. The screw can break. It will sit proud of The hinge, and by that I mean it won't sit nicely in that countersink. It'll sit up at a bit of an angle, which means the hinge then won't close properly because the screw is sticking up. So you then got to file it off, which looks ugly. So I will show you how you fix it. We'll make a bit of wood. These screw holes we've already got, just make them a little bit bigger. Now what will happen, if I put a screw in there, it'll go all the way down the bottom and there's no meat whatsoever. So, what you do is, I don't know if I've got any here. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, look at that. Matches. Or, uh, what else have we got over there? No, I can't seem to find them. I did have some toothpicks here. They would, they would work as well. Oh, what are these things? Kebab sticks? Toothpicks, anything like that. <clears throat> I prefer matchsticks because you get a better grip. And what you do is, where do I put my matches? Here we go.
bit of glue in that screw hole. Both sides. Ow, poke it down with a nail or something or other. And then pop a little bit of glue on the matchstick. Like that. Put the matchstick in the hole. Give it a whack with a hammer. And then move the router so you don't trip over it. Clip it off. Same on the other side. A little bit of glue. Pop it in the hole. Clip it off a little bit higher than flush. Like that. Then with a the hammer, Just flatten it out. And leave that to dry. Once that's dried, you got new timber again. So now you can screw into that or a little bit off center from that and your screw will hold. So that's what you do if you stuff a hinge up. So I'm going to put another layer of veneer in here. So I've got one here. Actually, I'll, go, I'll make a new one. It's easier. So you measure nearly the width of the box. It's about there. Get a knife. Give it a score. So that fits nearly the full width of the box. Just about in half, that one. Then I'll have two layers, so I'm going to actually fold that in half. Then get some masking tape. Put it over one side there. Wrap it up. Tear it off, then put another strip on the top, put that in there, and that is going to be absolutely perfect for positioning your hinges. It's only an extra 0.6 of a mil, but I can guarantee this won't have a spring in it. What I'll do, I won't even do diagonal um, diagonal holes just for the purpose of this exercise. I'll do one straight across from each other. I'm not doing it in where I've put that matchstick because I want that to dry.
Oh, that makes a big difference. For whatever reason, it's not wanting to play the game. Don't know. Then I go in and get another one. So this one, I'm fairly confident, isn't going to have a spring in it. You ready? Take those out. It's not quite lined up, so you just push it around a bit until you get it lined up. And then once it's lined up, you can put these other holes in. But the spring has gone out of that lid. So it sits nicely. <gasps> oh, a bit of fluff. It sits nicely. I've just got to play around with it now to line it up. But that is it. All we've got to do now, we might pull out, we might pull the uh, that box out and see how that's looking. It's been in there for over half an hour, so the glue should be set. That's tight bond original that I was using. We'll turn that off. And there we have it. One box. With the lid glued on. Gonna be the glue to clean up there. But we'll shape that up and clean that up. And then as soon as I get um, new induction plate. We'll put some high glue and we can put that bit of Madrona on there that we had. And it's another one, one step closer. Uh, where am I? Oh. What, beeswax would work, yep. What does syrup do besides, it um, lubricates, acts as a lubricant, and I would suppose takes heat away. Oh. Used to use matches when raw plugs were loose, that's it. Good things matches. 
Don't get me started on Domino's and biscuits and what are the other things? No, Domino's and biscuits. Oh, no, not a fan, dude. Not a fan. I know a lot of people that use them. Uh. Yeah, remember the, the the raw plugs used to be um, timber, didn't they? And now there's plastic. Different coloured ones. Uh. <whistles> hey, Julian, did you just sneak in? Well, hello. I thought I got you earlier, but there you go. Yeah, Sue's, Sue's grandmother used to do that, Max. She went until she went to sleep and come and bell her over there with a broom handle. Dowels, I don't mind. Yeah, that home with you, Jeff. Absolutely. Domino's is something we played with in the pub. Oh, that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. Um, 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 um. Because you missed it. I bought a new tool. I've got a new tool in the workshop. It's a Nespresso coffee machine. I'm going up. In fact, I'm going up now to have a coffee. There you go. You never did. You send me that email. You didn't, did you, Blue Wren? Uh, a Blackberry Twitch was worth it. Oh yeah, now I can imagine. <laughs> Say hello to Brian, stand in the corner. Oh, no, you're not. You're a busy person. <laughs> you're a busy person. Oh, it's all right. I know I'm not high on your priority list. Feel guilty yet? <laughs> I've, I, I've got your bit of timber. Where is it? I cut your bit of timber yesterday for the, um, 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 there you go, for the rolling pin. And I can't do it yet because I want to stream it. And... I broke the cable when I was making my apron. But there is, there is, there is the material for your rolling pin, Marta. There you go. Uh, see you, Earl. Eagle's Nest, end of the day, time for a stout. Oh, I couldn't agree more, only it's in the middle of the day. But it's, I'll have one with you just to keep you company, mate. Four sliding rolling pins. <laughs> yeah, four sided roll. Yeah, it's for doing flat bits. So you just. <laughs> hey, actually, it won't roll off the bench. There you go. Coach would, me dear. Uh, Stone Age rolling pin. <laughs> oh, no, I could start on that, but I won't. All right, so I've just got to manipulate these hinges to get that lined up. But that's how you take a spring out of a lid. What else have we done? Oh, I'll show you this bit. This is what we drew up that I'm going to carve. Oh, can't be bothered walking around the other side of the bench, I'll do it here. That's what I'm going to carve into the front of the eh, wall cabinet. So that'll get started very, very soon, I will imagine. Um, we glued the top on. Oh. That box there, and I showed you how to fit a hinge. Had a chat, Susie came down. So all in all, good day, I think. Good day. Oh, yeah, John, anyone can email me. Admin at woodworkingmasterclass.com.au. Heart attack time for you. <laughs> Why is that, Max? I'm going to go and have a coffee. Oh, oh, no, I get you when we're turning the pin. It's all right. I'll use rubber-tipped tools just for you, Max. Anyway, that's it. I've had it. 
Saturday morning, I've got to go with Susie somewhere, so that will be good. So this is Steve pulling the shed door down saying thanks everyone for being a part of it, for making it worthwhile for me streaming because sometimes you think, oh, there's no one going to be there. But there always is, which is exciting. So this is Steve pulling the shed door down saying remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe, look after yourself. If you're in Queensland, watch it on the roads because there's an extra 140 People in blue driving around in cars looking to raise revenue. So take it easy on the speed. Obey the laws, whatever they are. Enjoy yourself. Stay safe. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop, this workshop, tomorrow morning when we'll do some other stuff. Um, most likely more of this or I don't know. Oh, I know if I get some turning done without Max watching, I might be able to put the blender bench together. That'd be cool. That'd be nice. So that's it. Till we meet again, thank you everybody, stay safe, God bless and I'll catch you later. Bye for now.